As I mentioned on the Thursday uh, afternoon podcast, just before Friday, um, uh, that I was going to the uh, the Warriors game. Warriors. Um, I was going to the Warriors uh, Clippers game, and I was taking uh, the lovely Nia, and because uh, I wanted to go see Steph Curry in his prime. You know, you got to see him when they're young. Before they get the first major injury or before they just get old and remind you that you're going to die someday, you know, you don't need to see that. But doing that, you know, I saw Michael Jordan back when he had hair. I see him early. All right. When he was still skinny and the Pistons were beating the shit out of him. And he was dropping 60 on the Celtics. I saw him then. He was probably I saw him when he was they were probably. I think it was right before the Jordan threes came out. It was probably the second pair. By the way, for the record, when the first Air Air Jordans came out, I thought they were the ugliest fucking things I had ever seen in the in the red and black uh, Bulls colors. I thought they were the ugliest fucking things I'd ever seen. And by the way, Celtics fans, how much more likable is Pau Gasol now that he's not on the Lakers? I don't know what it is. My hatred of the Lakers really just made me hate that guy way more than I needed to. Um, anyway, so we go down to the game, and I'm... Um, yeah, I'm like ridiculously excited. Like I'm seeing one of the great NBA teams of all time, and I'm seeing arguably the greatest shooter. This early in his career, you can actually make that argument. This is this guy is the greatest uh, shooter in NBA history. And in my lifetime, I've watched Andrew Tony, Larry Legend, Reggie Miller, and I, I, I even throw Kobe Bryant in there. I never saw a guy have two people hanging on him out by the three-point line and just with his back to the fucking hoop and he still somehow gets it in, you know? God knows he's not looking for the open man trying to beat the double team. Why would you do that? <laughs> Anyways, so I go there. I get on StubHub, right? I fucking pay through the nose. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Pay through the nose. I get a six row behind... uh not behind the bench, but almost behind the Warriors bench. But whatever the fucking table where all the announcers are and shit, I'm, I'm like somewhere in there. Six rows back. And one of the great things is when you go to an NBA game is like if you're six rows deep, you can like literally hear them calling for the ball. You know, if, if like if the coach, if Kerr, Steve Kerr, if he fucking cursed at the ref like, oh, what the fuck? And he gets teed up. I know what he said. All right. That's what I paid for. That's why I went on StubHub and I said, fuck it. Huh? You want a wheelbarrow full of cash? Here you go. I'm not fucking sitting all the way. The Staples Center is the fucking worst. You, you got to sit down low or else it's like they got this, this brownstone of uh, corporate boxes. Three deckers. Three, three fucking levels of them all the way around. It's like a moat between... The fucking haves and the have-nots. And then all the real fans, they're up by the fucking air-conditioned ducks. So it's like, that's what's the option. I was either way the fuck up there or pay through the nose. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to pay through the nose, right? So, and I'm going to get there. I'm going to hear him talk, and I'm going to watch the, one of the great shooters of all fucking time. And I get there, dude, and I, I know during all of this I'm going to sound like a grumpy old man, but what the fuck happened to, to, to going to an NBA game? Dude, they, they didn't, there wasn't one moment of silence the entire fucking game. They even play music when the fucking game's going on. I didn't hear one sneaker squeak. I heard a couple of, yo, yo, call for the ball. That was it. I heard nothing. Because the entire fucking time the game's going on, some fucking douche is playing, everybody clap your hands. The whole, they played that fucking 50 fucking times. First of all, I walk into the fucking building, right? And I'm all excited. Where's my seats? I paid through the nose. Here we go, right? It's like when you go on vacation. You use all your fucking miles. We're sitting up in the front of the plane. Woo! You can't fucking wait to get on a plane. Where's my big comfy fucking seat that I fucking paid for, right? That's the level of excitement I had. And I go in there. And I'm coming down to the seats. And first of all, there's some DJ guy. There's always a fucking DJ. You can't even buy a pair of fucking pants now. You walk into a store, there's a fucking, some sad looking DJ there. Just sitting there, you know, with his bad posture. You know, some hack DJ just fucking playing music. I love too, with like curse words in it too. Like you're in like a place of business. You know? Cause I'm fucking you tonight. Right? It's... 
<laughs> They're playing like Biggie and shit, right? So, um, anyways, this is fucking DJ. And he's, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Every five seconds, make some noise! People at section 300, and you can hear me, make some noise! And everybody's like, ah. The game hasn't even started. What the fuck are we cheering? Huh? Are you getting us hype for the game, you fucking dope? We're about ready to see the Clippers and the Warriors. The Warriors got five losses. This is like watching the 96 Bulls, the tear that they're on. I don't need you and your Richie Cunningham varsity fucking Clippers jacket out there screaming and fucking yelling. Oh, it gets worse. I might blow a fucking, <laughs> I might have an aneurysm on this one. So I'm walking down going, oh my God, how, how long is this guy going to be yelling at us? And meanwhile, meanwhile, by the way, meanwhile, you know, the Clippers are out shooting around. And the Warriors are about ready to take the court. I'm going to get to watch Steph Curry fucking hit like 18 three-pointers in a row. You know, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to hear. Okay? I don't need make some noise. I don't need that shit, right? But, uh, you know, it's a new day. It's a new generation. It's their time. I'm just a grumpy old man, right? So I get down on my seat that I paid through the fucking nose for, Right on the fucking aisle, and the, what looks to be, it looks like Steph Curry's mouth guard that he's constantly fucking chewing on, right? And it's like this bracelet. And the, I, didn't, I didn't know what it was. It looked like a fucking, it looked like a, one of those things they stick in the bottom of a men's urinal, right? A urinal cake. Except you could stick your fucking, you could put it on your wrist. So it's taped to the back of my seat. So I immediately just flip the fucking thing over the other side of my seat, okay? Immediately. I'm not participating. All right, total contrarian, cunty, fucking stand-up loner comic. I'm not being part of the group immediately, right? And I'll take that. I'll take 40% of the blame of the rest of this fucking whining shit. All right, but the other 60%, I'm fucking right. So I fucking flipped that thing over, and the fucking DJ guy with the Richie Cunningham varsity Clippers jacket is down there, and he's, he's like, everybody hold up your fucking uh, urinal cakes. And when you hold it up, don't forget to make some noise. Everybody clap your hands. Dude, this is all going on, right? Insanity. Oh, and by the way, there's a bunch of fucking, you know, like, I swear to God. What's that? Who's that fucking guy who does the, uh, he sells the nice, comfortable T-shirts. But for some reason, he shoots like 12-year-old girls in like sexual positions. The fuck is the name of that company? It's not Amber Combrey and Fitch. They were into like fucking, wasn't it like uh, white supremacist Kennedy children? I can't, I, you know, they, it all blends together. It begins with an A. That's all I know. So they got these fucking like preteens, it looks like, coming down, you know, dressed like prostitutes and fucking like a, a B Hollywood movie, right? You know, like the ones in uh, Pretty Woman. You know, the only exciting part of that was when he was looking for a hooker and then he runs into that fucking, you know, Mola show and fucking champ there, right? I always hated when he fucking closed it shut. She goes, ar, ar, ar. <laughs> fucking laugh at all those fucking teeth. Jesus Christ. Ah. I swear to God, that clip right there was why I never dropped acid. Because if I ever ran into a woman like that and she did that, I swear to God, <laughs> I don't know what would happen. I think my fucking head would explode. So anyways, Jesus Christ, I haven't got to the start of the fucking game yet. So much just fucking bugged me. So they're doing dance routines, all this shit. So in the meantime, the fucking Warriors take the court and everybody boos them and everything. And I'm just literally going like, oh, my God, I, there he is. There he is. Here he goes. And he starts hitting fucking threes. And the second he does, every fucking jerk off in the fucking building, right, who wasn't making some noise. This came running down the fucking aisle, everybody with their cell phone cameras out, taking fucking video, standing up in front of me. Here I am, paying through the nose for my seats. I have to, I'm in the sixth row. I got to stand up to watch a shoot around. What are you filming it for? What the fuck are you filming? Can't you just fucking just sit there and watch it? I saw Larry Bird do a shoot around in 1986. I still remember it. I got the video right in my fucking head. These fucking dopes. All these fucking YOLO douches come down, right, with their fucking phones. So I'm just going, oh, God, here we go. You know, Bill, yeah, you know, 
You're the old guy now. This is this is how the youngsters do it. This is how they fucking do it, right? So mercifully, people finally end up sitting down. It's the end of the goddamn shoot around, and we're getting ready to start the game, right? And I'm thinking like, okay, finally, this fucking this 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 seizure of shit of tumblers and hoochies and fucking screaming and yelling and making noise and, and bracelets fucking blinking is going to end and I can watch the fucking game, right? There's no way this horse shit goes on during the game. There's no fucking way. And evidently, it's okay that they, they play music through the whole fucking thing. I'm watching Steph Curry bringing the ball up and I'm listening to Drake. You used to call me on my cell phone. You used to, you used to. Everybody clap your hands. Make some noise, right? Fucking, <laughs> I can barely hear the speakers squeaking. Dude, the NBA used to be the greatest fucking game. If you sat down low to see the game live, there's, there's no, it's not like hockey where you're behind the fucking glass. You know, it's almost like it's soundproof. And even that's still amazing to be down that close. But still, there's like this barrier. You fucking sit right down on the court, and they're right there. The fucking ball could bounce into your lap. It was insane. And, and you know, look, like I said, I'll take 40% of this, that uh, this is just me being a grumpy old man, okay? You got to keep, the game has to keep evolving. These kids are growing up with DJs. People are asking them to make noise, and they like to make noise. This is what their fucking generation does. Fine, fine. But can, can you just dial it back a little bit? Every time there was a timeout, all of a sudden there was all these fucking people running out. And by the way, the kids out there, to have a kid dance team, can you have them do a fucking kid dance? You know what I mean? Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Half those fucking moves I've seen in a titty bar, and I'm a fucking looking at an eight-year-old. Everybody clap your hands. The whole fucking thing was insane. And... um so, anyways, and what one of the funny things was I'm sitting there with Nia, right? And, you know, she's a great person. She's not a grumpy person. So she's just enjoying all of it. She's taking it in. She's enjoying the game, you know? And when all of a sudden they started, like, I swear to God, in, like, little parachutes, they dropped down um, gift certificates to something that evidently we couldn't afford. I don't know what it was. I can't even know what the fuck it was. And everybody's jumping up, like leaping up, trying to catch these things. Like it's, you know, the end of the Vietnam War. And this is a ticket to get on the last chopper out of there, right? Oh, and the, the fucking T-shirts, all of this shit. I hate when they sit there and they got one T-shirt left. And they start looking at the section, whatever section can make the most noise. And just watching people like a fucking dog begging for a treat. For a free fucking Clippers, a Clippers t-shirt. This isn't even a Lakers t-shirt. This is a Clippers t-shirt. Just watching all of those people taking all of their self-esteem, all every shred of integrity, and jumping up and down over a fucking eight-year-old to get a free t-shirt. I, I, I don't know. So anyways, so Nia points out there's some guy sitting in the front row that she follows on... Uh, Snapchat, I believe it's called. I keep calling it Instagram. Snapchat. And he's this dude who just goes, yo, they don't want you to fucking blah, 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 blah. And he's always doing whatever they say he can't do. And she goes, look at him. He's down there. He's right there. Oh, look, he's making a Snapchat video. She's watching the guy make the Snapchat video. And then she takes out her cell phone. And two seconds later, she watches the thing. And I'm watching the guy down there and and doing a snapchat i just watched the guy film it now i'm watching it on her phone and by the way in the meantime steph curry is going up and down the fire everybody clap your hands right i got add i don't need all of that shit so anyways as if that isn't bad enough as if i haven't been going on and on you know needing a, 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 an entire fucking box of tampons at this point how much i'm bitching at least i even though i can't hear it even though there's going to be somebody standing up in front of me, even though they're shooting T-shirts at me, telling me to make some noise and clap my fucking hands like I don't know where I'm at. Okay? Helen Keller should get, like, this level of fucking direction if she goes, oh, she's dead. Whatever. Anyways, Steph, Cur Cur Steph Curry goes out there, immediately gets a foul. I'll give it to you. It was a foul. All right? Three minutes later, they call some ticky-tack horse shit on the guy. 
He's got two fouls in the first quarter. Now they sit him down. And old fucking Freddie Stubbup is sitting there going, dude, what the fuck? This is the guy I paid to see. Everybody yo-yos to yo-yos to make some noise. And I'm, just, I'm fucking beside myself. Fucking beside myself going, this is why I fucking hate this. This is why, this is why these games get fixed. This is why the NBA is fucking fixed, because this is the only sport of the four major sports that the goddamn fucking referee can take the best guy out of the game. Just give him two quick ones in the first quarter. Can you imagine if you went to go to a football game, right? Oh, Freddie Stubhub. I'm going to see fucking... I'm going to see Tom Brady versus Peyton Manning the last time. I'm going to that fucking Broncos fucking Patriots playoff game. And whatever. Tom Brady gets two quick ones for intentional grounding or some shit. And next thing you know, he's standing on the sideline and the fucking backup quarterback's in there. You're just standing there like, dude, are you fucking serious? The guy spent like the whole first half on the fucking bench. It was brutal. And the refs were calling fucking everything, teeing everybody up. And I actually, the only cool part about sitting down low that I saw was at one point, is it Steve Kerr? Is that his first name? He fucking looks over at Doc Rivers and they, he gives Doc Rivers a like, dude, you fucking believe this shit? And Doc looks back at him like, yeah, what the fuck? Like sharing this moment just as coaches, like what the fuck are these refs doing? So I don't know what happened at halftime. If somebody called him up and said, hey man, this is like one of the best games of the weekend. You're fucking this up. All right. Put your goddamn whistle away. In the second half, they let him play, and it was it was it was beautiful. It's a fucking amazing game, despite the fact all of that shit was going on. Um, I know, I know, I went on and on. I probably went on too long. I understand, but like you know, it, it's it's such a great game, and uh, you know, I kept thinking about. Neo always watches all like those fucking uh, you know reality shows. And stylish shows and all that shit. And, uh, you know, when they trash people for what they're wearing, if somebody comes out and they'd be like, oh, honey, too many accessories. You need to take a couple of things off and just go out like, ah, you know, if they have like, like too many fucking bracelets and then the fucking, I don't know, a hat and a scarf, just too many accessories. And they go, you just take a couple of things off before you go out into the world, you know, be more Parisian. Don't be Tampa, Florida. Okay, I don't know why I said Tampa. I just, when I think of no class, I just think of Northern Florida. Yeah, I just said that. Are you offended? Well, why don't you look out your fucking window, past the crocodile over your truck with the steel balls hanging off the back of it. <laughs> I'm fucking with you, Florida. Come on, man, you can't be all bad if Walt Disney decided to put his world there. Um... That's what I feel like at those basketball games. They just, just dial it back a little bit, okay? Could the booty dancers be maybe, you know, could they at least be in junior high? Could, could that happen? That, that could be nice, you know? Um, could you play everybody claps their hands maybe just 18 fucking times during the game? You know, if somebody pays through the fucking nose to get sixth fucking row, could I, could I at least hear the sneakers squeaking? They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. You know what they should have done at the end of the game? You know, like, you know that... When you go to the joke shop and you just open the thing up and all the snakes would come flying out. That's what they should have done to the whole crowd. Just give them a fucking facial, a fucking T-shirts. and You know, I got to be honest with you. Even for me, that was extra cunty. Um, but once again, dude, I always stay to the end of the game. I don't know why people leave. And um, the Warriors were up by like fucking 12, 15 points or something. I think it was, no, wait, there was a nine, they were up by 11, they were up by like 15 points, and they, they cut it to 11, and people are leaving because there's only like a minute and a half left, and everybody's like, well, fuck this, got to beat the traffic, which is understandable in L.A., and everybody starts leaving, and I'm psyched because it's getting quiet, and I can finally hear these guys out on the court, right? And um, so the Clippers bring the ball up. And they and this is like they've taken all the stars around the game at this point. They just got the bench in for both teams. What the fuck? Even they're saying this game's over. Clippers bring it up. They hit a three, right? So now it's like a fucking eight point game. Warriors, whatever. They inbound the ball. Clippers steal it. Run to the three point line, a la fucking Reggie Miller. Boom! Hit another three. Now it's a five point game. 
Now the people left are like, oh, shit, what the fuck? And the Warriors are like, okay, settle down, settle down, get it past half court. They get it past half court. Fucking Clippers steal it again. Go to the three-point line. Boom! Hit another one. It's a two-point game, and the crowd's going crazy. The people who are left are going fucking crazy. This is what I wanted. Now, all of a sudden, they're fucking putting all the A-listers are coming back in to save the fucking day. Chris Paul's back out there, fucking Steph Curry, the whole fucking thing. The Warriors bring the ball back up again. They somehow lose the ball. Three, two, the Clipper guy's bringing it down. He jumps up in the air looking for somebody to pass it to. And then sees like, oh, fuck, there's not enough time yet. And then launches an attempt that it looked like they brought me out on the fucking court. And it felt like, I don't know, way short. It was just the wrong guy with the ball. At the end of the fight, I don't know who the fuck it was, but uh, even Nia looked at me. She just goes like, what What? What was that? I was like, yeah. I don't fucking know. I don't know. And then that was the end of the game. And then they were like, thanks for coming out. Make some noise. Um, but anyways, at the end of the day, I, I feel like I saw Steph Curry. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give it up to the Warriors, though, man. Like. Just watching the watching them the way they move with the ball around and all of that, and even with you know their star on the bench, man. There was a Thompson. I don't I don't know shit about hoop, as you can tell. Thompson, that guy was fucking killing them. And then they got this other dude. They have like backup center or something. This guy is a fucking house. He looks like a defensive lineman. If you know, you put six inches on him, and he had one dunk during the game. I can't believe he, he didn't fucking yank the whole rim down. It was fucking hilarious. He got ahead of steam and everybody just got the fuck out of the way. Um, and if only they weren't playing Drake during the time when it happened, man. I could actually could have heard that fucking earth shattering dunk. It was literally 30 feet away. I couldn't even hear it. <sighs> All right. I'm done. Okay. I just had to vent. I'm sorry, guys. I just, you know, just had a rough time.